Hi, welcome to WiseCat. Okay, it's been a while since my last video, and this one is uh, part of the reason why. Uh, 4.0, Moodle 4.0 is coming soon. And so I'd like actually the future videos that I do to be focusing on this new user interface because the changes are huge and they are awesome. So often when you have changes in the user interface, you might actually be worried that uh, it's going to make things harder to use. I don't really think that's true this time. So anyway, in this video, I'd just like to give you a quick look at um, what actually has changed, uh, a few of the simple things and a few of the reasons why I actually think it's so awesome. So let's get into it, but oh, quack, 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 quack. Ooh, the wingtip tip of the day is, don't try this at home, folks. Um, Essentially, what I'm meaning by that today is 4.0 is currently still in beta. Now, it's very close to release, and most of the problems are probably sorted out, but we're, um, we're, I'm going to be running it and looking at it today. I wouldn't recommend anyone setting up a production site Moodle for use with students on 4.0 just yet. Uh, please wait until the proper release. Okay, with that out of the way, let's uh, take a look inside. So the first thing that you see when you actually start up a new uh, 4.0 site is that the interface has become a lot cleaner like this. When we click on um, Login, for example, sorry, I've got an incredibly huge image as the background there. Uh, but this Login here uh, allows us to log in, but it, it's a cleaner design, it's a new design. Uh, one uh, one feature is that you can actually change the language on the login screen now fairly easily. Uh, the cookie notice is also behind a, a bit of a button and things like that. So that sort of cleans it up. Less clutter and much, much cleaner look here. I um, wouldn't say that I'm a big fan of the login as a guest button, but uh, I usually have login as a guest button disabled on my sites anyway. So... Um, not a real big issue there, but I definitely, yeah, big plus for the uh, ability to switch languages on the top page here. So next up, what we've got is if we log in, and I've actually logged into this site before, and when you actually go back to the site, return back to the site, it's got this nice little friendly, welcome back, Adam, uh, sort of a message. Uh, it's cutesy, it's totally cosmetic and everything, but I think it's these little touches that really make um, the site feel welcoming. Because, uh, I mean, well, it is welcoming, but uh, of course, if you if you navigate away from uh, that and then go back to the dashboard, it disappears, right? So it's not going to be welcome back every single time you go to the dashboard. It's just when you first log in um, as a returning visitor, it welcomes you back. <sighs> Okay, I know this seems frivolous, but nice touch, Moodle. Nice touch. Um, okay, on to the, perhaps the more um, impressive parts of the interface. Is that now the blocks are pretty much hidden into the block drawer. And if you've used a um, a, a theme like, say, bo uh, Move or something like that, you've probably seen blocks be pretty much tucked away before. Uh, it's really interesting that, that now the block draw is, you know, this is your additional function and functionality block draw and the uh, the block draw sort of a thing, well, the, the navigation that was in the left-hand side is definitely specifically navigation only and you don't even see it on this uh, dashboard page. Um, you do see it uh, when you actually enter a course and the navigation will appear here and you get this overview of um, the topics and things like that. And these also are collapsible in here. So you, if you've got that uh, a whole bunch of uh, activities, then you can, um, well, I'll, look, I'll show you the other course here. This is one of those test courses made from the test generator. But if that gets too long for you, you can zip those up and they, they close up like that. Yeah, another feature, um, I mean, as I said, there are just tons of features on this uh, particular Moodle release that I think are just great user interface improvements. But this is one that I think is particularly awesome. 
So if you've got a big long uh, whole bunch of uh, topics and a whole bunch of activities, you might find it difficult to keep track of where exactly on the course page you are and where uh, what your place is in here. And that's where, you know, when as you're scrolling down here, see that in the left hand side there? Look, it's like page two, it's whatever's at the top of the, the main window, that's what is highlighted here. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. I love that. Okay, um, other things, because I do want to keep this video fairly short. Uh, edit mode, turn edit mode on. I, I love the way it's not turn editing mode on or turn editing on or something. It's got a better name. It's got a switch. It's it's so much more intuitive. Um, if you want to grab something like this, this file, and let's say, oh, I want this file actually to be down here in, in um, topic five. Grab, yoink, over into the navigation and dump it there. And there it is. It has moved. I want this page uh, 29. I want this one to be back up here. Boink, there it is. Oh, moving things around inside of a course just got so much ease. No more, you know, trying to gradually, if you want to move something from the top to the bottom and previously, you know, you had to grab it, drag it up a bit and hope that the, the, the scrolling would take over. And that's clunky as heck. But if you just, you know, plonk it in there and there it is. So all of these things are, um, f you know, much welcome, uh, improvements to this thing. And sorry, the sirens going on outside. So I'm just going to pause for a second here. Whew, the noise is gone. Long live the noise. Okay, just a few more things that I'd like to actually show. I'm not going to cover absolutely everything that's changed in Moodle 4.0. Um, I'm going to leave a bit of uh, room for future videos and unboxing type sort of things. But uh, I will have a quick look in here because if you go to act in a, add an activity or resource, you get your file chooser up here. They've actually color coded um, these things now. Uh, they actually did color code. Them. It's sort of been a work in progress for a while now. Uh, I'm not 100% up with the coding scheme, but it's uh, color coding. But generally speaking, it seems that uh, blue is resources, you know, things, st static content type resources and some dynamic stuff because H5P. Hmm. Uh, pink is your dynamic content, so quiz, workshop, assignment, these sorts of things where students can interact with the system. Uh, you've also got um, your orange, uh, which is forum, glossary, database, and wiki. So those are your collaborative tools, so students collaborating with each other. And green seems to be more like communicative sort of things. That's the distinction that I think is a little bit weird. Um, doesn't sort of sit right that chat and forum would be different categories. I'll go. I, if had it had been me, I would have made the forum one green. Um, I, don't know. I don't know exactly why it's orange. I'm going to have to look into that and actually see exactly what the Moodle Association of Japan, uh, uh, Moodle HQ's um, reasoning for that is. But anyway. Um, I'm not 100% a big fan of these looking so similar. So, for example, file and folder, the icons there look very similar. And so it's a little bit tricky to find exactly what you're after at a, at a glance. So I'm not sure if this color coding is entirely awesome, but um, I like the idea that your consideration has actually gone in and they're trying something so let's see how it goes maybe i'll get used to it and i'll like it i don't know um but for anyway that's cool another thing that is really cool and this is something i totally want to do a video on um uh, just a whole video on MoodleNet itself um, i've been excited about MoodleNet coming for a long time now and curated content a social network where teachers can put up content and share it with teachers and you can browse it from pretty much with a link from directly inside the file pickup goes takes you to MoodleNet. you log into MoodleNet, and then you find a resource that you want to actually add to your moodle and there will be a button on the moodle net that just says send to your moodle and you click it and boom, it's there um so not going to demonstrate it right now. Teaser. Keep watching the channel. Subscribe. 
uh, ring the bell for the notification so that when I make that video, you'll final, you'll get to see it. That'd be cool. Okay, uh, big blue button also in 4.0 is a new feature here. Um, so big blue button, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, if you haven't used it, um, I'm I feel sorry uh, about that because it's awesome. Uh, big blue button itself, lots and lots of improvements. I should probably do a video on that sometime as well because they've introduced learning analytics data uh, dashboard, which tells you who spoke for how much. Um, basically, for those who, who haven't used it, it's an audio uh, open source web conferencing system, and it's really designed for online learning. You've got a, a, an area where you can put a content like your, your PowerPoint slides or uh, a video or uh, any sort of multimedia content. You can um, use screen sharing, you can use multi-user whiteboard, breakout rooms, polling, it's just everything is there that you could possibly want in a online classroom. And so that's pretty awesome that that is uh, a integrated feature with um, a Moodle 4.0 and that you don't even need to set up your own big blue button server to use it. You just, you know, it's, it's there, ready to go. So Blindside Networks, um, Fred Dixon as well, shout out to him, awesome dude. And they are uh, actually um, doing the serving for that for um, Moodle 4.0 and onwards, it would seem to just say, you know, hey, if you um, if you want to use a big blue button, then we've got you covered. Of course, there are some restrictions, like I think it's uh, up to 25 users, one hour long is the limit on length, and the recordings have to be, you know, they, they disappear after a week. But, I mean, geez, you're getting something for nothing here, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, that's a pretty awesome something, I think. Uh, okay, also the course interface itself, um, love these sorts of things where the, the participants, the settings, the grades and everything like that is right there. Um, I like that these things appear here. If you, uh, this, where where it cuts off for more as well, I think is actually, um, it's it's okay. It's, it's, I've never really liked the idea of question bank or Content Bank, for example, being hidden behind a drop-down. But um, it's it's kind of more sensible, it seems. It just feels like a better place to put things like participants, grades, and reports inside the course, because if you put it here, um, you can, you know, switching edit mode on, and it's still here and things, you can see your participants list at a moment's notice here as part of the course. Whereas before, having that over here in the navigation felt a little bit, um, I don't know, it, you can let me know if you disagree, but personally, I feel that the new home for those sorts of things at the top here is as sort of tabs rather than as a separate menu, it feels more integrated. It's got a better, um, it, it seems more intuitive to me. Um, the other thing is that all these things like the forum, for example, you click on the forum and it loads up in the same space here in the middle. And a lot of these things don't actually um, reload the entire page, it seems. It seems to have done away with a lot of separate page loads, which makes the whole feel a bit more snappy and, and just, I don't know, feels kind of perky. You put the page there and, psh, and stuff's there. Uh, what's behind this filters you know all your everything about this page is here it's it just seems like a, a much more cohesive sort of a thing I, I i don't know if i'm explaining that properly but before the feeling was that um if you had a course the course was a whole bunch of bits that were just shoved in there whereas this feels like this page 29 is part of the the a, a more unified experience so i don't know i like it i i like it uh, over here of course you've got your uh blocks i've got the accessibility block running there um which is pretty cool you can change colors and things like that but that's this this is not actually standard with uh, 4.0 but it's a, a an installable block and i like the fact that it works fine with 4.0 
Um, definitely like that. Shout out to accessibility uh, developers. Yeah, Brickfield, good, good stuff. Okay, um, uh, one last feature I'd like to show actually is uh, a new feature for site ad admins. And this one is one that I actually would like to see slightly different, but I love the direction it's going in. And that's the idea of site admin presets. And site admin presets are, are is pretty self-explanatory here, but you can set your Moodle to either be the starter version or the full version. And you can create your own on, or import uh, your own presets as well here. But if you go with the starter version, most popular features are there, but things that maybe not so many people are going to be using, like uh, LTI or SCORM or the workshop module, uh, analytics, badges, competencies, learning plans, etc. That stuff is hidden from from view. It, it's just, you know, they're not not available. Um, there are some other areas as well. For example, what blocks you're going to have available to your teachers. Uh, the blocks that can be added to a course, for example. There are a lot of things like mentees. Um, I don't know. Put a comment in the comments below if you have ever used the mentees block. Um, and if you use mentees regularly, I would love to know that there actually is such a person out there. But I don't think that that's the sort of thing that you really want to have. So um, for admins as well, it's making it a lot easier for you to say, okay, for my beginner Moodle users in particular, I would like to see, you know, my users are going to be mainly using assignment feedback forum, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, you can choose your own set of features that you want enabled. And you can disable the stuff that um, your users aren't going to be interested in. And that'll clean up everything, make, make everything a lot um, neater and tidier. Uh, the downside for this, actually, and if anyone from Moodle HQ is listening, what I would really love to see this is perhaps a role or something so that um, users can start on this particular one and maybe they can say enable all the features so that the the teachers themselves have more control and can say hey uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm done with being babied uh let's go hardcore buddy and they can enable this stuff if they want it uh, or if they can enable it after say um you know, you, you drag and drop in a file, you add a file resource to your course, and then, you know, just uh, that triggers an event that says, hey, you've uh, done this and this and this, now you've unlocked these additional features. So that it would sort of gamify the teachers um, developing better courses, etc. And I think that would be really cool to see. That's the only thing that I, I would say is a, a bit of a negative on this is that it is um, somewhat, it does appear to be very much a site-wide thing. Um, really cool feature, but I do want this to be user by user. So, um, so that uh, more advanced users can have the more advanced features. And the beginner users, it sort of, you know, it scaffolds in and lets them know where to begin. So just that, that would be cool. But yeah, anyway, um, I'm probably going to pull this up here. It's already, what, it's uh, almost 20 minutes of me yabbering on about uh, 4.0+. plus. I think very exciting times. Uh, in particular, new interface, really snappy, looking really good. The MoodleNet integration is, oh, I've got a feeling that's going to be the next big thing. That That's going to be a massive game changer. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. April 18th it drops, and uh, so I'll look forward to that. Uh, we'll also probably be doing an episode, uh, a live stream or something like that from uh, Moodle Association of Japan as well, and I'll probably jump on there and we'll have a bit of a talk about Moodle uh, 4.0 uh, just after it's released. I think we've scheduled that for the April 22nd, so... If you're a Moodle, member of the Moodle Association of Japan, check that out because um, announcements should be coming uh, on their page shortly. Okay, and uh, at that point, uh, thank you very much uh, from me and on behalf of my uh, rubber ducky, thank you very much and I'll talk to you 
sometime again real soon. Cheers.